Do you like my cardigan? I think it's my favourite and I've probably said that in a video before. Hey Spuds, it's Jamie, how's it going? Welcome back to another video, your first video on the channel. I don't know, but welcome either way. And today we're looking at men who can't write women. Men who have tried to write women characters and just failed. Like, have they ever spoken to a woman? Have they ever met a woman? I don't think so, based on their writing. Hello, just jumping in real quick, interrupting my own video to bring you a message from today's video sponsor, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is the number one rated virtual private network service. Did you know that whenever you connect to an unencrypted network, such as at a restaurant or a cafe, or pretty much anywhere else, your personal information is at risk of being stolen. But ExpressVPN encrypts your internet connection and makes this internet information including things such as passwords and even your emails, all safe and secure from being stolen. And it's not just your internet security that's at risk. Oh no, your privacy is also up for grabs as well. Internet service providers can see everything you do online, yes, even in incognito mode. And in the US, they can legally sell this information to ad companies. ExpressVPN puts a stop to this by rerouting your connection through their encrypted servers and hiding your location. And finally, all of this privacy and security is wonderful, but personally, I really love the fact that ExpressVPN allows you to watch things and have access to content and sites that might not otherwise be available in your country. Maybe you've exhausted Netflix in your country, or there's a very specific thing you would like to watch, such as, Adventure Time. That's no problem with ExpressVPN. You can just connect to a server in a country of your choice. For Adventure Time, a good one would be France. And voila, you can now watch that content. You can find out how to get three months of ExpressVPN for free by clicking the link in the description box or going to expressvpn.com forward slash jammy dodger. Thank you very much for listening. Now, ready for the video. He thought of how her breasts quivered and bounced when she brushed her teeth and how she laughed when she saw him watching. What kind of toothbrush does she have? How vigorously is she brushing her teeth? Is she jumping up and down whilst brushing her teeth? Doing an entire workout whilst brushing her teeth? Quivered. Ooh, <laughs> teeth brushing. Space pods were not the most elegant means of transport devised by man, but they were absolutely essential for construction and maintenance work in vacuum. They were usually christened with feminine names, perhaps in recognition of the fact that their personalities were sometimes slightly unpredictable. Discovery's trio were Anna, Betty, and Clara. What? In recognition of the fact that their personalities were sometimes slightly unpredictable. Sounds like a very tenuous link and just a very strange one. Sometimes slightly. Oh yes, I I'm a man and I think that women are sometimes like just slightly a little bit unpredictable and we all know that space is tricky and space pods, poof, yeah, they can be a bit unpredictable as well. Let's name them after women. What kind of thought process is that? And what kind of opinion is it that women generally are sometimes slightly unpredictable in their personalities. Her body had grown lanky from years of running, but it sent strong sexual signals to the males around her. Had grown lanky from years of running up to the males around her. So years of running had made her ungracefully tall and thin. I did not know that running could make you grow taller. If I'd known that, I would have ran more as a child to try and keep up with my brother, who is significantly taller than me, by the way. Weird, just weird. You know when you read things and you're like, mm. I really think it might be time for men to stop writing books. They're great, Kyla said. He coughed. Your greys, that is. Not that your breasts, I mean style is perfect for you. Just over the line between sexy and obscene. She refused to take offence. First, I take their attention, then I take their life. It looks cold. This time, he didn't look at her breasts, barely, despite the small attention getters standing at attention on top of her large attention getters. You can just say nipples. How many times can somebody say the word attention in one sentence? The small attention getters standing at attention on top of her large attention getters. Seriously, what the F? And if he had to describe boobs and nipples in just such a rubbish way, why also use standing at attention? Get a thesaurus if you can't think of anything different. Even then, this is just no. I was like, ugh, about the rest of it. And then I read the attention getters bit and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. life with women and how to survive it. An absolutely indispensable survival kit for harried males everywhere who know that they cannot possibly win. Wow, that sounds absolutely atrocious. I've got the back of the book as well, if you're interested. Women will probably be the last animal... Ugh. 
No. So states Dr. Peck in this hilarious and devastating exposure of the whims and wiles of this curious creature. How dehumanizing. Women are equals, and I cannot believe that we ever lived in a society where a book like this would even get published. Here is woman in all her infinite variety, wisely and shrewdly evaluated with salty good humour, delicate, delicate, delicately dissected with a razor sharp scalp. Oh. Her naughty caprices laid bare. Do you know, even as a joke, this is terrible. Eve, even if this is complete satire, I still hate it, and I don't want to read any more of it. <laughs> wow, I said, did you just call a guy hot? Never expected that from you. I am a girl, stupid, and I'm not batting for the other team if that's what you were thinking. Okay. She wore way too much pink to be a lesbian or a goth for that matter. She wore way too much. Okay, not that I was an expert on either, clearly. I glanced at the approximate location on her nose where she usually wore a stud, wondering how large a hole those things left, but her skin looked perfect, unbroken. I couldn't spot any holes in her lips either. The studs must have teensy tiny pointy things on them. For some reason that made me feel better. It'd be a waste to mask such great skin with a bunch of holes. Ew! I don't like this. I didn't think we could get worse than she wore way too much pink to be a lesbian or a goth. It's hilarious if it wasn't sad. <laughs> Girls are simply wonderful. Just to stand on a corner and watch them going past is delightful. They don't walk. I don't know how to describe it, but it's much more complex and utterly delightful. They don't move just their feet. Everything moves and in different directions and all of it is graceful. I'd like to do a little exercise. Could everybody watching please close their eyes and just envisage somebody actually moving remotely in any way how this person describes it. I'm gonna read it again and I want you to imagine somebody actually moving in this way. They don't move just their feet. Everything moves and in different directions and all of it is graceful. What part of that sounds graceful? What part of that sounds humanly possible? I was, when they, when, when they, when he wrote, they don't walk, I was expecting some kind of like, instead they glide. And then I'd just be like, haha, that's funny because they just clearly just walk. It was worse than that. Apparently women don't walk. All of their, everything just moves. They're like one of those, dancing things outside of like car sales. That's apparently how women move. Cleopatra. I commanded an army against my brother. Historians. Cleopatra was sexy. Egypt was stable and prosperous under my rule. So sexy. I spoke nine languages. Sexy. <laughs> it is like the overarching thing you hear about Cleopatra. Apart from doing my own reading, I didn't learn really anything about her other than she ruled over Egypt for a period of time and she was apparently beautiful. That's what you just hear. Everybody said, oh, Cleopatra was so beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, amazing. But you don't actually hear about what she did. Suddenly, Ligain, I hope I said that right, understood why she had chosen the human form for their romantic encounter. He stared at her flat, sensual womb like a pro gamer would at a cheetah. What, like angrily? Like, grrr, cheetah. Why can he see her womb that is inside? Does he have x-ray vision? I'm so confused. Mrs. Clark on stage, she sighs, her breasts rising big as souffles or loaves of bread, then falling, settling, resting. The way that some men write about boobs, it's as if they're their own people, you know, with like individual minds and individual movements. I've never heard somebody compare boobs to loaves of bread, and souffles and loaves of bread are very different shapes. So which shape are we going for here? And do we really need to know? I don't think so. They're falling, settling, resting. They don't actually rise, it's just because you breathe and your chest goes out, but the boobs themselves don't, like, inflate. Lungs are not in boobs. I've never seen a one-sentence headline contradict itself. TJ Miller's wife making a name for herself in New York. Pretty sure she has a name that she is making for herself and that you've decided to leave out of the headline. This happens a lot where the wives of famous or semi-famous men, even if the wives themselves are as well known or even more well known than the husband, they're still described as the husband's wife, not by their name. It's so weird. The material was thin. 
Her legs were long and smooth, her feet were bare. She was very slender, except where she shouldn't be. Except where she shouldn't be. Is this how somebody's decided to describe curves? This is bad writing. Also, a woman should be slender, except these very specific places. Women, if you're not gaining fat in the right places, you're doing it wrong. That's a bad, bad message right there. After all, long hair on a mature, sophisticated woman can seem about as appropriate as shoveling soup with your fingers. These comparisons are so weird. Oh yes, let me compare long hair on an older woman to trying to eat liquid with your fingers. They are so similar. They are practically identical. Long hair is fine, whatever age you are. Have long hair, have short hair, have no hair, have all the hair. Do whatever you want. Don't listen to this soup shoveling person. All of these were so very strange. Which one was your most disliked f favorite? Which one? D which one made you just question everything? Wow. Okay, if you like this video, you can think about giving it a thumbs up or subscribing or maybe even going and checking out that little join button next to the subscribe button if you want to find out more about channel members, but there's no pressure to do any of that, just letting you know that there are options. And yeah, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. If you stuck it through to the end of this video, thank you extra much. I guess you only would have heard thank you if you stuck it to the end. So thank you, thank you. Uh, congratulations on being here. Uh, I will see you next time. Much love. Bye.